looking at my logo, I'm really not sure what I want to do with this at this point, but I think I want to um, add some effects to this. And if you check out this skull, that's just incredible. All vector, a lot of detail going on there, really nice look. And I, I see something there I want to deal with, so I'm going to go ahead and um, select this and select ungroup. Don't ungroup all or you'll have 10,000 objects. You just want to go ahead and ungroup. It'll actually we'll ungroup all so we can see just how many objects we've got in there. 1,411 objects set up. Now, if you try to create all those vector objects, it would be a long, long time. But I'm going to hit Control Z. And what you want to do here is just go ahead and hit a regular ungroup. That way, everything's not going to come apart. And I'm going to take this, which is this particular effect here, and see if this is a part. It's not a part. Good. And I'll just right click on that and select order and go to behind and click on this feather. And that'll go right in there. And then I can just go ahead and take this. Actually, I could take this and move it out. And at this point, really, I could take this and add some more shading now that I'm outside of the complication of brushes. Sometimes it's better with the brushes to just start taking them apart and working with the objects and you'll get things done faster. But even though I've done the training stuff, I'm still new and learning because I'm creating some really off the wall stuff with this, but it's just a whole new frontier even for me working with these brushes. But you can see the type of look you can get with these. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this down here. Click this, right click one time, duplicate. And I'll take this and I'll right click and select order and I'll come down here go in front of and I'll select this brush down here that'll move that back there duplicate this here and I can simply mirror it and rotate it and start adding some more shading throughout my wings not working as a brush and probably should have done that order go to in front of click on this feather send that back there Order, and I'm just going to go up here and click on behind, and I'll click on this brush here. And I think this is the part that I, the two that I had grouped here. Yes, it is, so I really can't add that shading there. So we won't bother trying to put any shading in there, but I can add some more shading with this up on top. Because this shading with this brush effect is really adding some depth to the feathers that I want to have that will help it pop off the shirt a little bit more. And right click here, order, behind, and I'll click on this. That'll put some shading in there. And I could probably put some right up in here. So I'll take this, du duplicate it again, click one more time, rotate it, and bring this right up in here. And I'll right click here and select order and go in front of click here. Is that going to take me too far back? No, nope, that'll be fine right there. And that puts some shading in there. Now it's kind of rough patchy shading, but it still looks good on the graphic when you zoom out. I'll take my zoom tool here and zoom out just a bit and we can see that shading's really making a difference and letting those feathers pop off the design. So all of this having been set up, I'll go ahead and lasso everything and we'll consider this as being done here at this point. I think I want to adjust that shading just a bit more as to where its location is. I think it needs to be tucked up, tucked in up in here just a little bit more, right about there, and that'll be fine. So a lot of detail here, several thousand objects, but really cool design. Real departure from clip art into a hand-drawn look here. Let's go ahead and group this, and we'll bring this over here to the other side, and we'll go ahead and mirror. And now we've got our two skulls set up with our wings over our logo here. And I want to go ahead and process a save here at this point. Now what I'm going to want to do is that I've got all of this vector objects going on here with this logo is I think I can bring this logo on top of these. Let's see here to the front maybe like right in here and start to add some effects to this. Now this logo if I go to a black background here, I want to see what we're going to look like on a black t-shirt. We'll go to the back here, fill that with a black. We just got, wow, that's just an insane look. Um, I'll take this logo that I know is here and fill that with a white. And that's behind. I want to go order to front of page.
right there. And you can see if this was going on like a dark gray shirt, this would be a really insane look here. Now, because of the amount of vectors that I'm dealing with in these, I'm going to do some things here that um, will change this, but we'll deal with that later. I'll probably convert these to monochrome bitmaps just because they'll take up a lot less system resources in dealing in Corel dealing with them. But we'll take a look at that later. At this point, what I want to start doing is doing something with this logo. And also, I can take these now that I've got these set up, and I can really go kind of crazy with them. I can get the envelope tool and tweak these even more. If I want to change the shape of the wings, bring the shape of the wings in more, I can do that, as you can see there. But I've got to watch it and be very careful about destroying my skull or destroying my graphic. But you can see we get a really different look when we do that. And I can bring this envelope down here, bring this side in, and then bring this out, and I'll start radically affecting what's going on with, this, with these feathers and these wings related to the shape of the logo. Something like that there. Now, once you do something like that, you probably want to make some adjustment here on the outside of the skull. Now, I got the wrong wireframe there, but you probably want to bring this out just so that you can compensate for some of the loss in the skull, depending on how much destruction you get. But you can bring this out to compensate just a little bit here, right there like that. Now you can see, when I did that, I get a much better flow of the shape of that skull. It's a little more dramatic compared to what I had over here. And I kind of like that a little bit better, so I'm actually going to work with that. I'll go ahead and delete this. This I'll select, ungroup, everything here, right click and select convert to curves to take that envelope off of there. Then I'll go ahead and group again, make sure you don't hit ungroup all. And then I'll bring this over to the side here, right there. And then I'll go ahead and mirror this in this way. And now I've got a really cool look going on with my skulls. I can bring my logo down here in between the two and start to work with that. Or I can work with my logo up at the top of the design. And I think my logo is actually going to look better up at the top of the design. Now I want to bring in some effects down here to create some look going down through here. On this, something that's going to look a little bit different. And I've got some different brushes for that. I've got some chiseled stone brushes is what I call them, and we'll bring some of those in down here. So I'm going to go ahead and process a save, and at this point, pretty much the hard part, which is our wings, is done, and we went into some problem solving and some different things there, but I didn't want to back out of any of that. We're really pushing the envelope here with draw, taking these brushes and these designs as far as they can go. I'm going to go here to my artistic media tool. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go ahead and go to my brushes, and I'm going to go to chiseled stone tribal and select OK. When I click off here, I'm just going to create a straight brush so that I can look for what brush I want to use at this point in time. I'm going to need to make this significantly bigger. And there's my chiseled stone brushes at this size. Now, I think what I want to do is bring some chiseled stone, kind of play off the logo, and bring that chiseled stone down in through the center here. So I'll go ahead and bring that right down through here. And we've got some look to kind of build off the shape of the logo. I have the logo starting at the point, swooping down, coming down through this way. Trying to have some balance in the design. Go ahead and click this and right click and go order. Select in front of and click on here. And see how that looks. And I can change this different ways coming through here. I'm going to take a look at some of the other brushes also. Something like that, which I'll need to change the size of that, bring that down the size quite a bit. I went a little too far that time. And let's see, what is this particular shape anyway? And, okay, I'll go ahead and delete that. That's not really what I want to work with at this point. Maybe this one here. And I kind of like that one. If I go the other direction, Control-Z... And we make that a little bit bigger. And 
and that's going to give us a really different look here. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. Double click on this, and I'm going to bring this right up here behind there. I'm going to get rid of this node here in the center, and just bring this chiseled stone look right down through this way. And I'm going to double click, drop a node here, bring this over to the other side, and have this swoop down from the outside of the design into the center. And I'm not going to make it quite that long. I'm going to arch this up a little bit more here. I'm going to change this node here a little bit and just play off of something that's going to be swooping in here like a chiseled stone tribal look coming off of this side. And what I'm going to do is go ahead, just so I can see what I'm dealing with, duplicate this, right click, hold down, start moving it, hold my control key, release and select copy here. Then I'll go ahead and mirror this. I'm going to do that by holding down my control key, changing the shape and then bringing that over this way to the center. And I can bring these down in size just a little bit. And I want to change the rotation of this and play off the shape of the skull and the wings here. Coming down in and I'm going to change size here too also. So I'm going to want to bring this down in size. And I'm going to change the size of the stroke significantly. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and back out. Just delete these. Delete this. And I'm wondering if I want to go with the chiseled stone or I might want to go with the bevel. But I'm going to go ahead one more time with the chiseled stone here and see if we can get some interesting look here going on. I'm going the wrong way here. Control Z. I'm going to come right in here and come this way with this one. Come in with another one kind of the same direction, destroyed that with that stroke, don't want to do that, we'll come in this way, and we can bring this over here, we can bring that down, kind of like play off that point, actually I kind of like that now, and I will work with these, I'm going to take these two here, because they're on brush strokes, I'm actually going to go ahead and break these apart, go to arrange, break apart four groups. I'm going to select this one and this one. And we'll bring this over here. For now, I'm just going to move here. And hopefully I've got that line there selected. I want to move this one. I know there's another line there from my wireframe right there. So I've got these two objects of chiseled stone set up here in draw. These are pretty complex also. But we'll go ahead and work with this going right down through in here. Kind of coming down to a point that way. And then we'll go ahead and right click these. Order in front of. I'll go in front of the gray there. Go ahead and group these. Then I'm going to go back to my mouse because I don't need to work with the pen anymore. Start moving left click, right click one time. Duplicate. Go ahead and mirror these. I'll group these with everything that I have there. And then I'll take these and I'll send these to the back of the page. Order. Actually, I want to go in front of my gray here. And now we're starting to get a design going on here. Now, looking at the way these are set up and the flow of the design in general, I'm going to go ahead and lasso everything here. Group that and rotate it. And we'll get our skulls kind of set up so that they're looking maybe towards each other, but going in a little bit of a different direction. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of this here and delete that. I'll take this and duplicate it over here to the other side. Mirror it. Select both sets of skulls here. These are really close. I want to bring this out a little bit more. Select both of these. I'm going to group everything here. That being set up, I'm going to go ahead and do a paste. Now, I know I'm carrying on and rambling on, but we're creating a really intense design here with a lot of different things going on. Here's my logo. Now, if I wanted to, I could probably set that up here towards the center of the design down here, or I could go up here towards the top with it. I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do with this precisely at this point in time at least as far as this logo is concerned. 